Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan. Today I'm going to start a new series of videos on this rocket. Uh, this one is called the Rotary Revolution. And if you look at it, it looks very similar to another rocket that we sell at Apogee Components called the International Thermal Sailor. The difference is that that one was a parachute duration rocket. This one is a helicopter duration rocket. So internally are three rotor blades and that will cause the rocket to spin as it comes down. Um, so um, I'm going to get started building this. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube instead of on the DVD, uh, be aware that the one difference between the construction of the tube, because it shares the same tube, one difference is how the shock cord is attached to the rocket. And I'll go over that during the instructions of this rocket. But if you're building the International Thermal Sailor, um, be aware that this rocket has a different shock cord mount. So we'll go ahead and start with the construction. And I'm going to skip the construction of the tube itself on YouTube. Uh, because those videos are already done for this rocket, for the International Thermal Sailor. So I'll skip that part. I'm going to go right into building the front end, which is the blades and the rotor hub. So I'm going to pause here and then I'll be back in just a second. If you look at the blades on the rotary revolution, you will notice that they are curved. And the first step we want to do is to get those curved um, so that they have time to dry and while, we're, while they're drying we can do other things. Curving them is going to take a, a tube like this one and this is a uh, one inch, here if you can read it here, a one inch schedule 40 PVC pipe. You can find these at uh, like a building supply store like a Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, this one I got at Home Depot and it cost about $1.65, $1.70 so it's pretty cheap, um, and one will do. You can get two of them, so you can do all your all your blades at once. Um, but you'll notice that I did draw a line down the length of the tube, um, and I'm going to draw another one down the other side. And to do that, I'm just going to use an aluminum angle and a marker, and I want to use a permanent marker because this is going to get wet. So basically, just Hold the angle down and just draw your line. And we're done with that, so I'm going to get rid of it. Um, now the blades are on two sheets of balsa, and you only need three for the rocket kit. But we give you four because it just that's the way the balsa comes out. Um, and then you can actually use one as a spare blade because sometimes blades do break. They are very thin. They're one thirty-second inch balsa wood. Um, and we use that because we want to get the weight down as much as possible. Um, and it also helps them to fit into the tube just a little bit nicer. Um, so you can go ahead and pop them out of the sheet and they'll come out real easy because the balsa is so, so lightweight. Um, and then it has the little tabs in them. Um, and you can leave those in right now. We'll pop them out later after the curve. You can take them out now too. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, and this is very similar to what we did on one of our other kits, um, the gyro chaser. Um, basically, uh, we spray them with a pneumonia and water solution. And you might have some at home called glass cleaner, because if you look at it, it says with ammonia. Um, and that's what softens the fibers in the wood and, and allows them to bend really easy without snapping the wood. Uh, the drawback of glass cleaner is that it has a soap solution in it too, and the soap uh, makes it a little harder for tape to stick. Uh, not while, well, not when it's dry, but during the process of applying them to the tube, um, to, the, to the plastic tube. Uh, but if you use enough tape, they'll stick. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is just um, spray them down helps to turn it on and it has spray or stream and I'm using spray because that way I can do all of them at once and as soon as I spray them you'll notice that it immediately warped uh, 
That's because it's water, and water and wood causes it to warp. So I'll spray one side, do all of them at once, and then just flip them over and spray the other side. Now, ideally, you can let these set for a couple of minutes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started anyway. Um, I try to keep my hands as dry as possible because of the soap. Um, I got masking tape over here that's already pre-cut and I got some long pieces and some short pieces and you're going to need some of each. Um, now the trick here is to make sure that all the flat edges, you see the flat edges on the blade, they're all on the same side. So if I put them here, and, and this is my right, your left if you're looking at this. So if I put them over on the right side, then it causes the blades to spin. Um, if you look at it here, here I've, here I've got them so they're going to the left. And it doesn't matter which direction you choose, just they all have to be in the same direction. Um, so if I had one with the, with the straight edge here on the right, and then another one with the straight edge on the left, what would happen is as the blades are coming down, they would kind of interfere with each other and it wouldn't spin. So we do need them all going in the same direction. So remember that as you're putting these on. So what I'll do is I'll just lay it on the tube like that, take one of my long pieces of tape, get it started. And I don't want to cover up too much of the balsa wood with the tape because um, it has to dry and it has to evaporate and it, the water won't evaporate through the tape um, because basically you're covering it up. So then on the other side, too, and you can do two, two, two of these blades at once. And on the other side, again, make sure it's going in the same direction. And then I'm just going to pull the tape around and I, again, I don't want, my wet fingers have the soap on it, so if I touch the, if I touch them and get them wet, tape is not going to stick, so I don't want to touch the tape hardly at all to any of my hands. So I got it wrapped around there, and I got to do the bottom. Again, make sure it's sighted along the bottom. Now if you get this wrong and they don't, and if you get it crooked like that, you can basically re-wet the blades and reattach them and reform them, and it will work just fine. So don't get too concerned, but try to get them um, nice and nice and straight along that line. The straighter they are, the more consistent your rocket's going to fly. I'm going to roll it around, get this side nice and straight. Pull that tape tight. Okay, so now that they're on, we're going to wrap them with cloth. And this is an old bed sheet that I had torn into a strip and it's, it's about two inches wide. It doesn't have to be exactly two inches but it doesn't even have to have straight edges. It just needs to be you know, approximately that wide so that we can wrap it around the tube. Um, and now when I lay this on here I'm going to lay it at, a, at an angle to the tube and you can see I'm going with in the direction of the curved edge and that will help um, get the blades to lay flat. So I've got it probably at a 45 degree angle to the tube. And then I want to wrap it around the tube and pull it tight. I want to cover all of the wood if I can. And if you don't get it, you can just pull it up and reattach it. And you can see right away that the, uh, the water is coming through the cloth. Now when I get down here close to the bottom, um, the cloth is already holding the blade down so I can actually remove this piece of tape. And the more tape you can remove, the quicker it's going to dry. So that's why I'm pulling it off. The one at the top, 
and there's nothing I can really do about that one, but this one I can. So once I get them all covered, they've already covered it now, and so now it doesn't really matter about this. It doesn't have to look pretty down here at the bottom, so I'll just keep wrapping it around. And I'll just take another piece of tape and just tape it down. So now this here, I'm going to set aside to dry. Um, you can stick it out in the sun. I usually stand them upright so that um, you don't get any dents on them. Um, just stand them out in the sun and they can dry um, in a dry environment. Here in Colorado, we have low humidity and they'll dry within an hour or two. Um, other places, you might want to wait longer. You know, waiting overnight is uh, probably the best. And while we're waiting, um, there's other things on the rocket we can be doing anyway. So don't be afraid to go ahead and do this now and then uh, let these dry, do the other ones, let them dry, um, and then we can continue building.